There are so many questions about batteries. How do they work? Is there a return on investment? How do you pick the right size? And how do you pick the best battery? So if you are interested now, or when you will be interested in a battery system for your own home in the future, which I'm sure you will be, you have to watch this video. Today, we are focusing on my top five picks for batteries in 2023 and going into 2024. These choices will work whether you're getting a battery as an addition to your existing solar system or if you're about to get solar panels and want the whole solar plus storage package. So let's get right to it. Powerwall Plus is one of the obvious choices. I believe it is Tesla who started that battery crave in our market. Their battery is very well done and personally, based on my experience, not very problematic at all. It is obviously harder to get and I think that's why Franklin Battery is making such a big statement, but we'll get into that in a minute. Before we get into the specifications, let's talk a little bit about their newest, newest battery coming 2024. So they're actually coming out with Powerwall 3 next year. We don't have too many details about it yet, but knowing Tesla, it'll probably be just as good as the existing one. So what I found online so far on Tesla's website is that Powerwall 3 cannot and will not be compatible with Powerwall 2. So if you ha currently have number two and you plan to expand your capacity, you will have to go with the same battery. And I am really curious how long they will actually keep making Powerwall 2. So if you ever thought that you need to add a few units, I would probably do it sooner rather than later. Now they're also saying that Powerwall 3 will have a built-in solar inverter as well. So I assume it's going to be a hybrid, which is what I've been talking about for quite some time. Hybrids are definitely the future. Now we want to avoid as many losses when it comes to AC to DC conversion. I like to say KISS, keep it simple, simple. As soon as there are more details, I will try to cover that for you. Now back to what is available now, so Powerwall Plus. It uses NMC battery chemistry, which is pretty well known. However, it is a little bit more prone to thermal runaway than LFP. And just as a reminder, thermal runaway is that phenomenon in which a lithium ion cell enters that uncontrollably heating state. So it just reacts different or worse to heat than the LFP chemistry. Tesla Powerwall Plus has a capacity of 13.5 kilowatt hours. The peak power output in an off-grid mode is at 10 kilowatts, no sun, with a continuous power output of seven kilowatt and quick tip here, so if you ever wonder what breakers a battery power surge is capable of handling, you can do an easy math by dividing the power in watts by voltage. So if you have a double pole breaker, 240 volts, you can divide 7 kilowatts or 7,000 watts by 240 to get 29 amps. So if the appliance that you want to start with your battery during a power outage has that amperage rating of less than 29 amps, you should be good. Now, now, some appliances, and quite a lot of them, in fact, HVAC especially, can surge at a much higher capacity. So just check the specifications or maybe invest in a soft starter. Tesla Powerwall Plus has a maximum continuous current off-grid at 40 amps. So just keep that in mind. You might be able to start that AC unit with one battery, but you might drain the battery in one or two hours if you continue to use it when being off-grid. So you might end up with an empty battery two hours into a 12-hour outage, which would suck. <laughs> The Powerwall Plus is outdoor rated, but please keep in mind that the best operating conditions are between 50 and 109 Fahrenheit, as for most batteries, really. And I often say that you're spending so much money on the battery, keep it within your house, AKA the actual garage, not on the outside where anyone can mess with it. And it'll also be then protected from outside environment like snow, rain, or heat, especially heat. Those conditions usually will degrade your battery even sooner. The Powerwall comes with a 10-year warranty, which is very, very standard. Now, as far as the cost goes, which is the most exciting part, I did the process on their website, and if I wanted to buy battery alone and find my own installer, it would cost me about $9,300 with taxes. But I have an option to hire Tesla to do it all for me, and the cost then increases by $5,300 with shipping. So you can get it 
all around for $14,000 and 830 bucks. Then they do reserve the right to then add some extra charges associated with the installation, which is absolutely understandable. So now if we divide the 14,830 bucks by 13.5 kilowatt hours, we get $1,098 per one kilowatt hour cost. Next, we'll talk about another AC coupled battery, that's Franklin. I sometimes like to call Franklin the power wall dupe. Now, this is not in any bad way. <laughs> Franklin saw that there was a need for a product similar to Powerwall and they have been many, many instances where people would buy the Powerwall through Tesla website and just had a little longer wait time. So Franklin jumped in, filled in, and now Franklin sells through their batteries through distributors, which allows their product to be much more available than the Powerwall. This product is definitely well designed and looks very good in any garage. It has similar power capabilities that we will cover shortly, but the plus here for Franklin, Franklin compared to Tesla is that they actually use the LFP chemistry, which like I mentioned, that technology is superior to NMC in terms of safety, lifespan, and tolerance to extreme temperatures. The Franklin battery is rated at 13.6 kilowatt hours, so they added that 0.1 kilowatt hour to be better than Tesla, with five kilowatt hour continuous power output and 10 kilowatt hour of peak power output for 10 seconds. That is a little over 40 amps for current peak current. But please don't think again that your 35 amp HVAC unit just needs 35 amps to start. This is a little bit misleading and based on my experience, a soft starter for an HVAC unit is your best, best choice. Because I really have done many different installs with Franklin batteries where homeowners really, really wanted to have that option to turn on the AC unit and most of the time the battery did not handle the peak power needed. Some HVAC needs three times the power to start compared to their actual running wattage. So please just keep that in mind. Just like with the Powerwall, Franklin battery comes with a gateway that connects and controls all the operations together. It's called a gate, and you can hook up up to 15 battery units to one gateway, which is 200 kilowatt hours worth of backup, which is probably unnecessary. An extra feature that they also have, and it's a big plus for Franklin, is that their ability to connect it to a generator that can charge the battery in an outage. For example, on the cloudy days, rainy days, when your panels just can't keep up with the production. That feature would be very useful. The cost will be a little bit higher than Powerwall with the equipment, battery, and the A gate at around $11,000 and that cost for installation roughly $5,000. So you can expect to pay around $16,000 for one battery installed. And I guess the cost here will depend on the state that you are in, but we can agree for this video that that labor and extra electrical will cost about $5,000. So we keep it the same for all batteries. So. If we follow the same math for the Franklin battery, we get $16,000 divided by 13.6 kilowatt hours. That gives us $1,176 per one kilowatt hour. That is a little bit higher than Powerwall, but one thing I forgot to mention is that because this is an LFP battery, we can already see the warranty is longer at 12 years compared to 10 years with the Powerwall. I want to add here that please don't just base your choice on price alone. Something might be more expensive, but might suit your actual needs better. And cheapest isn't always best. Remember that. Now, don't gamble your money here. This is not a cheap investment. The Tesla Powerwall as well as Franklin are great to be retrofitted into an existing solar system or added as a whole package as well. Now, let's move on to our third battery, Enphase. This is also going to be an AC coupled solution because you can retrofit that battery into an existing solar system. The only catch here is that Enphase battery must be paired with an Enphase system. So if you have micros already on the roof, there's no issues. But if you have solar edge optimizers and you wanna add an Enphase battery, they will not properly communicate together so it wouldn't be your best choice. Their newest battery, 5P, uses stable LFP chemistry. Its energy capacity is five kilowatt hours where you can stack it. And the continuous power rating is at 3.84 kilowatts and it has a peak power output of 7.68 kilowatts for three seconds. The peak output current for three seconds is 32 amps. And their warranty is pretty high at 15 years or 6,000 cycles at 60% capacity. 
As far as the price goes, we will combine two 5P batteries so we can get a similar 10 kilowatt hour capacity. So for two 5P batteries plus the controller, we can expect to pay around $9,500 plus the agreed $5,000 labor, similar to Franklin and Powerwall, we can expect around $14,500 for a 10 kilowatt hour system or $1,450 per one kilowatt hour. Let's switch it up a little bit and let's start talking about hybrids. So another option is a Solark inverter. It is a hybrid inverter that comes in three different sizes and most popular being Solark 15. Now this is not the battery capacity. Solark is a solar and battery inverter in one, meaning you avoid that DC to AC conversion on the roof and then battery conversion from AC to DC. And then in, again, back from DC to AC to the house to battery, man, too many conversions. So we simply are charging the battery directly from DC on the roof into the battery. So it's a much, much more efficient setup if you ask me. And honestly, like I said it many, many times, I fully, fully believe that hybrids are the future. Solar Edge has a hybrid inverter. SMA is coming out with one in the next few months. And the same goes for Tygo, Solis, and Tesla next year. Now the market for AC batteries is and will still be there primarily because of retrofitting batteries into existing solar systems. Okay, but back to Solark. So that hybrid inverter is actually battery agnostic and it allows for any 48 volt battery to be connected to it. You can hook up home grid battery, stores battery, EG4 batteries that are super, super affordable. You can go to town and pick whatever suits your budget. Now, the good thing is that most of those 48 volt batteries are gonna use LFP chemistry. So your safer option. Now we can't really talk about capacity here, but if you use EG4 Power Pro battery at 14.3 kilowatt hours capacity, you will be in the similar size range as Franklin and the Powerwall and Emphase. So Solark is really best known for its powerful nature, I like to call it. It became very, very popular, especially here in Texas, because we have really big houses and a whole lot of AC units. <laughs> the 15K Solark has a continuous power output of 12 kilowatts and and peak power output for 10 seconds off grid mode at 24 kilowatts. Now there is a shock there. Listen, data sheet also specifies that for 100 milliseconds, the solar can surge at 30,000 watts. That's 30 kilowatts, more than a 24 kW standby generator, which is huge. This setup is very popular for those who want to do whole home backup and want their one or two AC units to be powered by the system. Now the maximum output current is at 94 amps with PV and 75 amps with batteries only. So at night or when there is bad weather. Solark is on a 10 year warranty, but when you select your battery to pair with your hybrid inverter, you also have to look at and check what the battery warranty is to make sure because Solar doesn't make their own battery. If we assume pricing for one EG4 battery that's 14 kilowatt hours at $4,000 plus Solar at another $7,000 and the installation cost of another 5K, we arrive at around 16 to $17,000 for that particular setup. Now keep in mind, you already have a solar inverter included. So going with the higher number, 17,000 divided by 14.3, we arrive at 100, 188 per one kilowatt hour. Moving on to Solar Edge. Solar Edge is a very, very well known brand all over the world, and their home battery is NMC Chemistry and is DC connected to their hybrid inverter. This hybrid option is also meant to be connected with their Solar Edge string inverter and power optimizer. So, similar situations as we, as we had with Enphase, where you cannot use the battery with a different system. Now, if you have an existing Solar Edge system, your only option is not just Solar Solar Edge battery. You can use a Franklin or a Powerwall as an AC coupled solution. You do have a few options, but since Solar Edge is a hybrid, why not use that DC to DC conversion losses or the lack of them and just go with a pair? One Solar Edge battery gives you 9.7 kilowatt hours of usable storage five kilowatt hours of continuous power output and 7.5 kilowatts of peak power output for starting those higher loads. Now that also translates to about 31 amps for the maximum current and 240 volts.
Their warranty is very standard at 10 years at 70% capacity retention. For cost, we're going to look at around $10,000 for all the equipment and another four to five for the installation. So very, very similar cost to Enphase, except again, we have a solar inverter already as part of the battery system. You'll just need to add the DC power optimizers on the roof. So cost for one kilowatt hour is around $1,450. I also wish I could talk about the newest SMA hybrid inverter, but that is still in the making and we can expect it to be available in early 2024. And based on preliminary specs, it will be ranging in sizes from three all the way to 11.5 kilowatts with a 32 amp as rated output current. Hopefully when more information is available, we will be able to test that unit as well and see if it's any good. I do have to say that SMA took their sweet time to create any hybrid. Some would Say that they're a little bit late in the game but that gives me a little bit hope that they learned and listened to those early adaptations of battery systems and made something really really solid we'll see you know me i'll be testing that battery when it's out a few other options that i wish i, I had the time to discuss with you would be tygo as well as epq by canadian solar i would personally maybe prefer those two options over solar edge personally but that's just my preference all right guys what are your thoughts? Do you have a battery system in place already? If so, let us know which ones. Or let me know which one would you pick from the ones we talked about today. Please make sure to subscribe and give this video a big like and I will see you guys in my next one.